From the oil fields to the farms of Oklahoma, all week long the work is done. But on Saturday, it shuts down and the focus shifts to Norman. Tonight, the Sooners are back in town, coming off one of the biggest wins in program history and proving once again that putting in the work pays off. You are watching Oklahoma Sooners football presented by Air Comfort Solutions. Baker and the boys are back and they are fired up here in Norman and why shouldn't they be? The number two team in the land is back home to face the Tulane Green Wave out of the American Athletic Conference. Hello everyone, Brendan Burke and Dave Anderson, happy to be with you. This Oklahoma Sooners team was ranked number eight preseason. They moved up to five after one week, and now after two weeks, they are the number two team in the country. And Dave, they are looking the part of a national championship Absolutely. contender. Absolutely, they went into Columbus with revenge on their mind, and they went in there fast and furious. They did not sneak into Columbus. They matched them physically and flat out beat them up and got out of there with a victory. But what I really liked about them is they controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football. They went in there, revenged that loss, and now these guys haven't lost in 364 days. You see the final score, 31-16, but it was a 3-3 score at halftime. What'd they do to pull away? The guy I thought was the man of the match was that man right there, number 36, true H-back, Dimitri Flowers. That 36-yard TD is what tied the game at 10 and really set in motion what Oklahoma did the rest of the half. Mayfield finished 16 for 17. He was able to work the pocket and, most importantly, finish drives in the red zone. They were unstoppable down there, which led them to victory. Welcome back to Sooner Football here in Norman with head coach Lincoln Riley. Coach, an emotional win last week in Columbus. Some people like look at this as a trap game. Your team, though, how do they practice and prepare this week? Uh, we had a good week of practice. You know, I think they understand that we've got bigger goals in mind. You know, we've only played two games, and we've got to continue getting better as a team, and this will be a big step towards doing that. You told us yesterday that Baker Mayfield still has room to improve as a quarterback. Where, coach? He looks like he's got it figured out. How will you measure his performance today? Oh, just by, you know, how he leads us as a team, you know, which he's done a great job of so far. You know, he's got to be able to take in this game plan, uh, do a good job of distributing the football, make a lot of great decisions. Coach, we're glad to be here. Good luck today. All right, thanks so much. Thanks to CT, thanks to Lincoln Riley. You see the head coach of the Tulane Green Wave, Willie Fritz, his second season trying to turn this program around, something he's made a specialty of, turning programs around, and they're hoping for good things in New Orleans from Willie Fritz. So the first third down for Baker Mayfield and the Sooners. They're at 44% through the first two games on third down. And the first pass of the game for Mayfield is complete over the middle, right near the first down marker. Mark Andrews makes the catch, and they'll give him a first down. Earlier, the senior that got them into the red zone is the one getting the football here and pulled back out. It is Brantley. And that time, he can just get to the 10-yard line. No gain on the play. On second and 11, Sermon in motion. Play action, taking a shot. He has a wide open C.D. Lamb. No chance for anyone for Tulane to catch him. An 82-yard touchdown for Lamb. And nothing special about it. Just a streak route by C.D. Lamb, but what caught him off guard was Trey Sermon coming out of the backfield. A nice job for Mayfield, uh, Mayfield letting the play develop and then just leading C.D. Lamb for the touchdown. As you see here, nothing special about it. The corner just shoots his guns, thinks he has responsibility in the flat. No one's deep. It's about as wide open as it gets there, Brendan. Then an easy cruise into the end zone. Well, the true freshman C.D. Lamb, the running back that was the starter last week, and was playing until he fumbled on the second possession, and then he wasn't seen again. And he gets the carry here, out to the 32-yard line on his first carry, goes for seven yards. <laughs> no pun intent, ride the wave into a victory here. I'll ride the green wave, though. Mayfield steps up, short pass is complete. Marquise Brown finds a lane on the outside and brings it up to the 45-yard line, chased out of bounds by John Marbley. Adams to the right of Mayfield. And they will get it to Adams in the flat. Everybody's got a block, and Adams has a chance to cut back and get all the way up to the 41-yard line. 27 for 35 against Ohio State. He started four for seven with 134 yards. Most of that courtesy of the 82-yard touchdown grab. This is Adams again with some green in front of him. Knocked down at the 25-yard line. 15 more yards for Abdul Adams. Sermon and Sutton. 
Come in with Mayfield, but it is Mayfield to throw. Has some time over the middle, open, complete, and a touchdown. C.D. Lamb has them both for the Sooners. This one from 22 yards out. And just a crossing route, but what that really opened up was the cross action in the backfield. Tulane got a little mixed up with their linebackers. But the fake sucks in the linebackers, and they're able to find space for C.D. Lamb. And Mayfield just delivers a nice touchdown. You see this cross action right here. Boom, look at how it sucks up 57. That's his responsibility to get in that passing lane. But nope, C.D. Lamb's already on the other side of the field, ready and waiting for a touchdown. And I don't know if it's having an effect today, but it looks like it. They put it in the hands of Darius Bradwell, the fourth different running back to check into the game for Tulane. Three men in the backfield, and it's the quarterback with the option. There was nowhere to pitch it. There was nowhere to run. Yeah, nowhere to pitch it, nowhere to run, and no room to run. Oklahoma does a great job stringing that out all the way to the sideline. The sideline, the 12th defender on the field, you got to use it, especially in these options. You see, they start they start the ball on the short side, and they're running this option. If you're not going to tackle, keep forcing them. Great job by Beal. And they carry for Hutterson, the fourth player to run the football today. Four too late, and that one is picked right to Parnell Motley, and now it's a foot race. The only one back there is Brantley, the quarterback, and now he's got a blocker, and it's going to be a pick six for Parnell Motley. And exactly what I was talking about, you got to stay awake because this team doesn't know how to throw the football that well. And so what does he do? He jumps in front of a pass. He knows this might be a passing situation. He's awake, and he makes a play, and then he finishes the play. That's what you want to see. There's one thing making an interception, but taking it back for six, that's what separates the good from the great receivers. You see that, a tip ball, jumps all over it, and then finish, run for a touchdown. Great job getting the hands on the football, and sometimes that redirect can be tough for a DB to catch. Piedmont, as they say, making the big play, putting OU on top. Hilliard right behind his quarterback again. They're trying to option and couldn't get away. Read by Parnell Motley. He got him off the field last time with the pick six, and he does it again. And a great call by Coach Stoops sending Motley off the corner. And he says, I'm sick of this. I'm sending these guys. I'm going to force you to throw the football because I know you can't do it. You'll see Motley just shows up on the right side of your screen, and boom, blows up the play. Another big play by Motley, but hey. Weeks. It's 2000. Mayfield on a pump, and Lamb adjusts and came back and stays on his feet. Mayfield's been throwing the ball, and Lamb's been hauling it in. Donnie Lewis able to take him down, but a 23-yard strike. That looked like a veteran move there, a pump, hoping the DB would bite him and go over the top. But if he doesn't, throw it behind and force him to make a play. Great job by Lamb adjusting. So this time, it's Marcellius Sutton. And Marcellius Sutton continues on, just shy of a first down. He had nine carries against UTEP, led the team. Last week it was Trey Sermon. And this carry, it's Sutton again. And good luck taking down Marcellius Sutton. You see if Baker Mayfield and the offense can get that touchdown back here in the final minutes of the first half. And he's going to take a deep shot and a diving play by Mark Andrews. Huge play by Mark Andrews. You're exactly right. Diving and getting all that back in some. You're kind of worried about them having been fifth, that 15-yard penalty but to get back in one. Tulane was never set. They quickly snap it. They throw it to Marquise Brown, and he's run out of bounds. Mayfield, wide open, touchdown, Abdul Adams. Where was this guy? Abdul Adams saying, give me the ball, coach. I'm sorry about last week. I'm sorry. Does a great job coming out of the backfield. Some people call this a gator route. Some people call this a five route. Some people call this arches. It's just really easy. The back comes out of the backfield, gets put in a one-on-one -on -one situation with the linebacker, and sneaks right by him for seven. You see him coming out of the backfield. What's he do? Uh, they don't want to pick me up. I'm not going to come inside. Boom. It has been 21 straight points scored by Oklahoma as Hilliard gets just a yard. Yeah, you hear the, the crowds come alive. The defense is going to come alive. They're finally slapping hands and hitting each other on their head a little bit. Brantley tried to go up the middle, and he got clocked by Gallimore. <laughs> Gallimore, 310 pounds coming your way. They call him the Canadian bulldozer. Watch here. 
Quickly gets through, swim move, get out of my way. I'm gonna go wreak havoc. Second charge, timeout. Doesn't even have Oklahoma. to really get down and make Lock a tackle. Out, you run into a man that size, sometimes you just fall over. Brantley, who completed his first four throws of the game, has missed his last four and has thrown a pick. And he gets sacked from behind. The ball came out. Kenneth Mann was able to get to Brantley. And they will hand it off here to Marcellius Sutton. Nine yards on the carry. They send Adams in motion, and then they throw it to him. Abdul Adams has lots of green out there. Dragged down by the ankles at the 40-yard line. Mayfield here. Wants to go long. Wasn't there. Comes back across the field. Looking for somebody to get open, and he does complete it. And staying in bounds is Brown as he gets to midfield, but he'll be a yard shot. The Oklahoma offensive line had a bunch of defensive linemen just pinned to the ground, giving Mayfield plenty of time to look left, look right, stop, check again, and then come all the way back around. You'll see one guy down. Now there's another guy coming on the backside of the screen. He's down. Here's Mayfield just directing traffic and finally finds an open receipt. Bob Stoops. He had an 18-year run here before stepping aside in early June and handing the keys to the Ferrari to Lincoln Riley and Abdul Adams is off to the races. Yeah. Knocked out of the 20-yard line. Oh, got to get that last oh, if you try to get there. The receiver's got to get down there and get a block for him. Yeah, Adams does a good job just following this read. One of those holes is going to pop open as you see big Eric Wren does a great job. He cut right behind his butt. And then it's a good job finishing this run. To get through there, breaks a couple tackles, make a guy miss, cut off another block. Great job downfield by Jordan Smallwood. After the four-yard loss, second and 14, Mayfield sets, fires over the middle complete. Mark Andrews. Maybe a couple of yards shy of a first down, thanks to P.J. Hall's tackle. There, I certainly did. I didn't think that guy's had a chance to tackle him. Oklahoma third down. And Adams does convert. They're now three for five in the football game. Marcellius Sutton right up the middle for the touchdown. Sutton just following those big offensive linemen, look at them all fired up, still talking enough trash, letting everybody know we're the biggest, baddest dudes out here. No worry, pull those two big boys, Orlando Brown, clear in the way, not a chance. They're more physical play on two lane. Brantley. Dragged down by Okoronkwo. Third and nine. They are 4 4 9 on third down, and he is sacked. The ball came out. Okoronkwo. Junior Diaz able to get back on the football, but Oko Ronquo got a hit on the quarterback. And reason to celebrate, look at this man. He is a man amongst boys right here. Coming from your right side of your screen, a little stump move comes inside. Surprised he's that wide open. Does a great job tackling and getting the ball out. Those are things that they teach you as a defensive lineman. If you're this wide open, you got to not only just make a play, make a big play here. Go find the football, be a ball hawk, and celebrate once you do it. The early hit. We have a new quarterback in for Tulane. This is Ka this is Khalil McLean, and he tried to stretch it out. Kenneth Murray having none of it. Welcome to the game, Khalil McLean, a true freshman. Yeah, bigger. Khalil McLean, a 6'3", 220-pound freshman out of Creekside, Georgia. Third and 12. And down he goes. Neville Gallimore was in there, and DJ Ward came to his help. Neville Gallimore, the Canadian bulldozer, bulldozing his way through that offensive line. Big voices, give me some love. As you see him at the top of your screen, once again comes through on a stunt, sheds two blockers. Just gets in there. Nice job by the entire Oklahoma defensive line. As you see them just pushing that, that, that pocket completely back. Mayfield takes his time. Lots of room for Marquise Brown. And now even more space. 
dragged out of bounds to the 41-yard line. Nine total tackles, five solo. As Mayfield rips one to the far side of the field, complete to Marquise Brown, who he has continually targeted here today. That's 11 yards and a first down. Brown didn't even get into the game last week against Ohio State. First and 10 from the 30. Sutton. Cuts around, knocked down, just shy of the 10-yard line. Jared Franklin made the tackle, but an 18-yard carry for Sutton, who continues to rack up the yard. Yeah, and here you got your split black formation, which has caused Tulane some trouble on the pass and the run. Oklahoma able to break open a wide open run here again at Tennessee. And he's a guy that was highly coveted out of high school. This is a pass. It's a completion. It's a touchdown for Jordan Smallwood. I promise I was going to say pop pass, but I thought it was going to be Flowers and not Smallwood. Oklahoma known for these RPOs down here, like we were mentioning earlier, in between that 10 and 20 yard line, they're extremely dangerous because that they just need a tiny little window. Smallwood doing a good job finding his way behind those linebackers on a slot route. Even though this guy's this cornerback's got inside leverage, he goes and eats it up. It's an easy pass and catch there. Too much room by Tulane. They got another first down. On the option, McLean, the late pitch bobbled, and this ball is all Oklahoma and Kenneth Murray. Throw from Murray, complete to Meade. And Meade tackled just before getting to the 30 by Trey Jackson. A handoff to a pitch play that they ran, so he is someone that they want to get on the offense and give, uh, give some looks to. This is Sermon. Eventually taken down by Lawrence Graham, but an eight-yard carry. The guy who started all 29 games now since the start of the 2015 season. Sermon. Gets away and gets in. Touchdown, Trey Sermon in Oklahoma. And nothing crazy about it, just a simple off-guard run play. Probably like 16, maybe seven, or that'd be opposite. So like a 15 power type play. Able to get behind these big offensive linemen. They all block down. Trey Sermon does a great job breaking a tackle there, getting through and finishing the play. Impressive. I asked him why he stayed at Central Missouri so long. He said, I didn't think I was ever going to leave. <laughs> McLean going to beat the outside, and they won't let him go. Trey Brown, step for step, and a four yard loss. These are really important snaps because if someone goes down in a big game, these are the guys that are going to fill in. These guys need to see football. They need to get their, uh, you know, get their licks in in the game. McLean on the keeper, just back to the line of scrimmage. Florida State, who was ranked number five, they wanted to beat Missouri, Ball State, and beat Texas at number 11, but then they lost to an unranked Texas Tech team and pretty much foiled their plans for the rest of the season. That's not what this team wants to do. Utterson got tackled immediately by Addison Gumps. Right at the line of scrimmage. Alan Murray. Out to the 10. That'll make it third and manageable for OU. See if he shows it off here on third and two. He'll throw. He's got the arm that is complete. And a first down for Oklahoma. Three penalties last week against Ohio State. Tyler Murray taking a deep shot. And he got it! Lands in the hands of Marquise Brown! And how about that going up top on the play right here? It's a big toss by Kyler Murray, and an even a bigger job by Marquise Brown running into it. Sometimes those look easy, but when you see that ball flying in the air, you know you have to stay full speed to get underneath it. Ooh, those can be tough and does a great job keeping his arm running and running through the football. A lot of times you see what happens is guys, they stop running and they, they do what's called forklifting. They just stick their arms out and they hope that the ball lands in there. Nope, you got to keep those arms pumping and run through the football, finish the play. Great job by Marquise Brown. And I tell you, they're not too happy when Murray went over the top. They're definitely going to take their shot right here. McLean steps up. Throws shy of the end zone, incomplete as the clock hits zero and the game is over. Tulane had a 14-7 lead at one point in this game, but Oklahoma roars back and then some. 
and wins 56-14 for the 13th consecutive win for the Oklahoma Sooners. Yep, and Coach Lincoln Riley, the fifth coach to start 3-0, the seventh time in the last eight years that Oklahoma's been able to start 3-0 and get out to one of these fast starts. That helps when, as you go, as you want to make this push into the Big 12 Conference and eventually, hopefully for them, into the college football playoff. Lincoln Riley now 3-0 as a head coach. And he is down on the field, and Christian Steckel is right with him. CT? All right, guys, thanks, Coach. You guys were down 14-7 in this ball game. Most people thought you wouldn't be there, but great teams make adjustments. What was the most important one you made tonight? Uh, defense just settled in. You know, we... Uh, Gave up those first two, and then after that, we scored a defensive touchdown and shut them out from there. So uh, they do some great things offensively, you know, that are really tough to defend, and our defensive guys settled in and played, played very well there at the end of the half and then the entire second half. You're 3-0 now. Obviously, though, this time of the year, it's about improving every week. How do you want to see this team get better going forward? Oh, a million ways. You know, we've got to be more consistent. We've got to settle in a little bit earlier. We still haven't played great early in games yet on any side of the ball. So we've got a ton of work to go going into Big 12 now, and, and uh, so we'll get to work on it. Coach, thanks so much. Appreciate right. the time. Thank We're going to welcome in Baker Mayfield here. Baker, come on in. Great game tonight, as always, my man. 331 yards, four touchdowns, but it was interesting tonight because 20 of the first 30 minutes in the first half, you guys were on the bench. How frustrating is that, and how hard is it to get into a rhythm? It's very frustrating, you know, as an offense, but, you know, when you come into a game like this, knowing what their offense does, it's, it's expected. So they did a good job of controlling the tempo and, you know, having the time possession. But offensively, uh, I didn't have a great game. Uh, you know, you had the yards and the touchdowns say otherwise, but you know my completion percentage was not not where it needed to be tonight. And I didn't give my receivers enough of a chance, but you know we we played just well enough to you know come out with a win in the end. I love how humble you and your coach are. They both you talked about it. You know, trying to get better every week, trying to improve every week. Going forward, what are the things that you want to see in your game improve? Oh, I just got to give my receivers a chance. You know, when I when I gave them a chance tonight, they made great plays. So um, you know they made me look good, but. It's just, like I said, got to give them a chance. There's too many overthrows and, and, and just missed spots tonight, um, which it's got to be, you know, more zoned in. Saw you hobbling a little bit on that ankle. Obviously, you're a tough guy, but where is the status of that ankle? I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> on to the next. Baker, thanks for the time. Brendan, back to you. Thanks, CT. That 63% completion percentage coming a little bit back down to earth for a guy who was at 83 coming into the game. Final score here tonight, 56-14. Oklahoma, be sure to tune in to FS1 next Saturday for more Big 12 football as these same number two Oklahoma Sooners take on the Baylor Bears. That game will kick off at 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central. For David Anderson and Christian Steckel, this is Brendan Burke. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your weekend.